Gary, just want to start off by asking you about, I know you got that try to start, but you must have been happy with your defence. I can see you're pretty knocked up there, but you made some big defensive hits in there today. Uh, oh yeah, certainly helped with, with Bundy and, and the wingers and Rob, I thought was exceptional as well. So it was pretty tough coming against certainly the, those centres that they have between Ben and uh, Ben and Jonathan and then uh, Owen moving to 12 when George came on. So we knew we'd have our work cut out for us, but it was, it was actually kind of similar to last week in terms of Scotland. That, we knew they've got the individual flair to beat you one on one, but it was how we could kind of back each other up. So they made a couple of few line breaks. We probably won't be pretty looking at the video, but but I think we were able to back each other up and, and just about hold them out. And Joe spoke about that eight minutes after the second half. We said that you guys had to hold them out. It was maybe the most important match, and he was most proud of you guys. Is that something you guys were proud of? And you spoke about at halftime. You knew you had to hold them out for a while. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, yeah. Well, sorry. It was it was tough. I know we were under the pump for a good while and. It wasn't probably the best way to start the second half. We probably had talked about trying to um, finish the, sorry, start the second half the way we finished the first, but we have found ourselves on our line and I think it was an incredible character shown by the forwards to, to put in the work they did. You know, I mean, us backs had a job slightly easier in those circumstances compared to the forwards' work they put in. And how you just describe how special it is um, that this group of players are Grand Slam champions? Yeah, it's, it's, it is pretty insane. Like, even even thinking back to, to what Johnny said earlier on in the week and when he was in this position a couple of years ago, he had to wait, what, nine or ten odd years to get another crack at it. And yeah, that kind of hit home with me that I was thinking, geez, it'd be 32, 33 to be in this position again, obviously, ideally before them, but, but in the, applying his circumstances to the situation. So it was certainly one of the, the best weeks and, and most intense weeks I've been involved in. What's possible with this group of players, do you, do you feel that? Oh, I don't really know. I haven't really looked. I've come in towards the latter end of the uh, Six Nations off the back what was off the, what was incredible work by Robbie and, and Chris. So I haven't really thought too far ahead other than, than coming in and trying to fit in alongside Bundy and, and the other backs. Harry, Gary, how challenging was that to come in like that? Because you had a whole pile of rugby played and you were trying to match an incredibly high standard. And Chris spoke about the number 13 jersey and those who have held it. And, it's, it's a jersey he holds in high regard and I guess everyone holds in high regard. Yeah, it's it's an amazing position to be in as a country considering there's, what, there's four guys, probably five or six guys, if not more, and um, between all the provinces, you know, we've been battling out for the 12 and 13 with, with a lot of guys capable of playing both numbers. So, um, yeah, that's from my point of view, reiterating what Chris said, there was there was some incredible work put in by Robbie and then, and then himself and it was trying to, yeah, match that. Talk me through your try at the start because it was as unusual a score as you'll see in international rugby. Yeah, it was a bit fortuitous and Rob did incredibly well to get up and and uh, make the contest tricky for, I think it was Anthony Watson underneath it, so I was just lucky I managed to pick up the scraps. How much does this mean to you? And is it even more special for you considering that there was one stage of the championship where it looked maybe like you mightn't feature due to injury in the form of other guys, as you've mentioned? Yeah, no, I, I'm well aware that I'm incredibly unlucky to be in the position I am and off the back of Robbie and Chris's injuries. I know if they hadn't picked them up as, as unlucky as it was, I wouldn't be in the position I am. So, um, yeah, I won't, be, I won't forget how lucky I am. I, 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 maybe I, I asked that incorrectly because I'm making it sound like I'm saying you're lucky, which, of course, I'm not. Oh, well, no, no, you, I am. I but, am. <laughs> but you have to take the opportunity. Like, Sean Connery wasn't first choice for Bond. <laughs> well, I don't know now. I think... So do you know who Sean Connery is? You're, I know no, you're very young. I do, I do. Don't worry. Uh, uh, look, I, I know from my point of view, and I'm talking to the coaching team, it, it was about coming in and trying to fit in as opposed to knock the lights out in any way, shape or form and just build on the foundation the other lads had, had, had put in. And I think, look, I keep saying, I was lucky to be involved alongside Johnny Bundy on the inside, who was incredible, and the wingers and Rob. I mean, it, it makes my job that little bit easier. And Thankfully, I Japan and then even just a couple of weeks training because uh, it was on the break week to come in and train and get confidence from that. And when you were watching Johnny scoring that trap goal, I presume you were at home, did you think, eh, this could be our season, there's just a few signs maybe that, that this could be it? Yeah, oh, I think it was in the bridge uh, with a couple of the Lancer lads we got together to watch it, so that was a pretty memorable moment for, for anyone who's in any way associated with rugby in Ireland, so uh, it'll one I certainly won't forget. Does it make it more memorable in a sense, winning it here, because it's a tough place to come and play and, and win? Yeah, like, there was all that external stuff, like St. Patrick's Day and Twickenham, and 
from my point of view, the week that was in it was trying to forget about that and, and it was just another game as, as tough as that position it is. It was just about us and, and certainly myself personally trying to deliver on the basics as much as possible. And yeah, there'll still be a couple of things I'm sure will stand out as, as wrongdoings, but for the most part, you know, can't complain really having won it. Give us a sense of what it was like that moment you got in the dressing room here with a lot of Guinness drunk, but sort of paint a picture for us. Oh, uh, I actually got drug tested afterwards, so I missed the initial <laughs> celebration, but the, the lap of honour was, was pretty special. And uh, my parents were over, my girlfriend went over, so it's nice, nice to share the moments with them as long as, uh, as well as the lads. And Gary, how good was um, Ty Furlong's pass for the uh, Bundyaki break given up there as a, as a midfielder yourself? And yeah, does, yeah. Come from a yeah, well, we, we'd, we'd run it a couple of times in training, and I mean, Ty is, defies the logic for a tight head with, with how mobile he is and also the deaf skills he, he has. So um, I knew I was chasing on the outside of Bundy, who was, did exceptionally well to get it inside to, to CJ, and it was a pretty intelligent finish against the post. There's yeah. always that little uh, line about people calling him the mayor of Wexford. You know, <laughs> I know he, he wasn't too keen on that in the past, but he's going to have to wear it. Uh, he's just he's a humble humble farmer from Wexford. Yeah, there's no <laughs> simple things with him. Do you tell us about the shiner when did you pick Gary Oh, I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it seemed to bubble up during the game. So, uh, yeah, it's not a little war wound, but it's it's not too did, bad did at you all. Did really. during the game? Was it affecting your? Uh, oh no, it's fu- I, I could feel it. I could certainly feel a golf ball bubbling up, but it do- it was, wasn't affecting anything. Thankfully. In these moments of reflection, do you think back of when you kind of were breaking in and the work you did with Brian O'Driscoll and I suppose the other people who have helped get you to this point? Oh yeah, well certainly in the nearest sense that you I mean the, the medical team at Lancer is a tough old time with between my shoulders and, and my ankle. So Dermot Brennan, who was the main guy I was working with, put in a ton of work to try and get me to where I am today. So without the work of himself and, and others behind him, um, yeah, I wouldn't be in this position. Gary, what about this uh, demon here beside you, uh, Jacob Stockdale, who keeps, you know, are you guys even in awe of him as well? Oh yeah, he's a knack of scoring all right. Um, no, he is, he's, he's been exceptional right to finish. In, and from me playing with him at 20s in his first year, it comes as no surprises how good he's been for Ireland in the 20s to Ulster. Uh, to now with Ireland, so yeah, for it makes my job that bit easier. Just get him the ball, and and he seems to do the rest. Hey Gary, will you give yourself the opportunity, like, to give yourself a pat on the back, essentially, because it's pretty impressive coming in at your injury layoff and performing so well over the in the last few games. Oh yeah, well, again, it, it's there's a lot of people in behind the scenes. Like I was talking in terms of Lancer uh, S and C or uh, medical team that would have got me to where I am today. So. I'm well aware, like I put in a bit of work, but there was a whole team behind me who, who were working just as hard. So as well as playing alongside guys like him who are doing what they do. And um, so I can't take too much credit, to be honest. But uh, now I am lucky to be in the position I am and, and I'm well aware of that.